So you came across that, you know, your friend told you about the, the flips being easier. So how did you first start getting into flipping and, and did you start off with your own money at first? Uh, no, I didn't. I've actually never used my own money for flipping. Okay. <laughs> Jealous. I I, I want to get with you on how to how to do that. <laughs> yeah, we can talk. Yep. Um, but the but yeah, it that kind of like opened my mind up to the concept. And because of that, like up to that point, I had always felt like flipping or other things. I felt like they were kind of off limits. Yep. Because I didn't have the straight up cash to just drop on a property. Yep. You know, um, and so anyway, I I share that because I want to I want to see people more people starting with their first deal as a flip, you know, because yeah. it's so doable. Um, yeah. But yeah, I so it was kind of a logical now, transition with how now, it, now real quick before everybody starts doing that, I just want to emphasize this one thing i know you want them to go start off with a flip but i i recommend for people to start wholesaling before they flip and there's a yeah. there's one reason why you get to know if you do it right and you start talking with your buyers and you start learning with from your buyers you get to know the the rehab costs a lot yeah. better and that's well, that where most people part, yeah. you get to know the areas yes that's the key like yeah. at, at least for me it, that was yeah. like once i once i found like it took me a long time to find but once i found where other people were flipping yep then i was in business then i yeah then so, you start looking at higher quality deals where there's enough meat yep. on the bone to make some money and stuff like that so 100% and that's where if you're a wholesaler just going through the motions I'm going to tell you you are doing yourself a disservice you need to talk to your buyers you need to see what their renovation costs are now everyone's renovation costs are different because you may hire you know this a crew to be able to do all your stuff another person says or hire a crew with a general contractor Another person says, okay, I just sub everything out. So now they can take the general contractor price right out. Okay. And then another person will do it themselves. It'll take longer, but it's cheaper. Yeah. So the more you know exactly what things cost and what way you're going to go. Okay. I think yeah. the better you become as a flipper, as a wholesaler. Um, yeah all around in, in well, real estate and something i'll say too is like wherever you start those two paths they they really look especially at the beginning they look pretty much the same yes because no matter what it all starts with marketing yep because you got to find a deal and by marketing it doesn't have to be mailers but i do mm -hmm. think like that's a really good thing for people to get their feet wet with and and start learning that wheel, that world. Um, yeah. As far as getting into other paid channels, you don't have to start there. You can find deals for free, like on Facebook. I found, yep. I found deals on Facebook. Um, 100%. But yeah, it, it really should look pretty much the same because you start off marketing, you get something under contract and you know, just, at least from my experience, what really happens is you get several things under contract, you don't get them closed, but you learn from each of them. Yeah. That was my that was my journey. Like I okay. maybe everyone's as slow of a learner as I am, but um, yeah. But it it took me a lot of like get them under contract. You know, pretty soon through this whole process, especially wholesaling. But once I got more into flipping. Now mm -hmm. I can get my whole due diligence done in like less than 24 hours from getting right. a property contract. I can get my inspector, contractors, if I need subcontractors, like if I need to get a quote from mechanical, electrical, whatever. Yeah. I, if I need to, you know, there's something weird in there and I, I need to get a specialist in there. 
Okay, well then I get them in and I can I can have that all happen within 24 hours. And and that's great, you know. And it's because you know also you know your costs of, of things as well. Yep. You know? Uh, yeah, that helps too. Is like I, I get yeah. better at estimating and stuff like that. But exactly. So that's the thing. Like as a wholesaler myself, and I come to you with a deal, and you know I talk to you like, hey, you got this foot. Okay, it's in in your general area as far as price wise. You know, we talk, and you're like, hey, I need to be. This doesn't work for me at your price, but I need to be here. You know. Yeah. Okay, great. That is awesome feedback. Okay. Yeah. If I'm not getting any offers at the price that I want, then yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. I'm going to come to you before I go back to the uh, the homeowner or the seller, and I'm gonna be like, hey, if we if I get this down to this price, can we get a deal done? You know. Yeah. I'm not going to get a that's one thing I don't like about I don't go to a homeowner or a seller and say I need a price reduction without having a offer back backup. What I mean by that is is I don't want to go to them with a price reduction and then have to go back two weeks later with another price yeah, reduction. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I say, okay, if we do this price reduction, we're gonna close in two weeks or we're gonna close in a week. You know? Yeah. And and I think um, also this is for anyone out there that's either wholesaling or looking to wholesale. Right now we're in a very interesting market. It's, n I, I would say most of the places where I'm at, um, the market's stable, but any flipper that knows what they're doing, they're discounting their projected prices, yes. like right now. Um, in fact, you should have been like a few months ago, for sure. Yeah. And so whatever, when you're running numbers and whether you're a wholesaler or a flipper or anything else, you need to be discounting them. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the market's saying it's worth right now, you need to discount from there, like probably 10 yeah. to 15%. And then my, you build numbers off of that. Yeah, my comps, I only go back three months. Yeah. That's it. I, I cannot go back further. Yeah three months only. If I have to go back further in order to find cops, then I, I discount and give them more. But what I try to do is my ARV with those, I try to discount at 10 to 15%. But I see deals from other realtors. I'll, I see them all the time where I get them in my inbox and and they're clearly pricing it like it's six months ago or more. Yep. And I'm, I just, I, I don't even look at theirs anymore. This is another reason why I've done this show as well is, is to help educate as many people out there as possible. So yeah. with our group, with our Facebook group, you know, we have about 2,400 people now in the Facebook group. Um, and then I'm, I'm just now building up my YouTube channel. So that helps. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, I specialize in, and by the way, if anybody wants to JV with me or just get on a phone call with me and get, get my opinion on a deal that they have. Um, I'm happy to do that. Give me a call, send me an email. My email is down below um, scrolling. And, you know, I'm happy to give my opinion, but I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna tell you whether I can sell, you know, it's very, it's a lot harder to sell something inside Detroit than it is Metro Detroit, you know? And I have to have an even bigger discount inside the, inside the city of Detroit you know, out of the Metro Detroit. Right now, at this moment, there's not a lot of buyers inside Detroit because it, yep. they're trying to be risk adverse. Yep. So, um, yeah, which is, which is interesting. I I guess I, I don't specialize in Detroit, but I guess I don't, I don't see that coming down as much in price as many other areas, <laughs> but. Yeah. So, but I guess only time will tell. Exactly. And Andre Kingston says, I'm a realtor and I'm listening. I'm hearing what you're saying. So that's good. Keep it that way. You know, I always see 
the, the, the comparative analysis that realtors want to hit. And what they do is they say, oh, let's try to hit that 10% above that and see if we can get that. And, and unfortunately, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, oh my gosh. If you're, if you're flipping houses or if you're a realtor and you're doing this, if you have agents that are advising, like, you know, here's what this is worth. We're going to list it for five, 10% more or whatever. Yeah. This is not the market to do that. No. Like you, a year ago, deal, yes. A year if ago, you don't, yes. if you don't price them right now, your deals will get crushed and no one will even take a look at them. Because the thing is, is so, that like, if I had, I'll tell you right now, if I had funds <laughs> available to me to either do flips or do buy and holds, okay, like I could hit these on market listings and like cut up, cut the prices in half. Okay. Yeah. And I can guarantee you that, you know, if it's been on the, on the market for more than 60 days, one of them is going to take it. Yep. You know? Yeah. The, yeah. You get, the, you get yeah. sellers that are on the market for 90 days and, you know, even like 30 days, like people aren't, people don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not used to it. Sellers have had amnesia. Like they don't, they don't remember pre COVID days. I know. <laughs> so, like, and which I guess it, it works for us as investors on the buy side. Yes. Um, but you got to plan for it too. Like for me as a flipper, I've got to adjust what I'm planning for my holding costs and stuff like that yes. because you're holding it longer. So you gotta, you gotta bank on like what I'm focused on right now is I'm focused on, okay, how do I, how do I really compress the timeline of my flips? Like my goal, and we're not there yet, but my goal is that yep. all of our flips are listed within 30 days. Wow. And so that's Even what I mean. Big jobs? Like, Even the big jobs? We're minimizing big jobs unless there's gotcha. real big profit. Like, see, I, see. And that's where buyers are at right now is they want carpet paint, refresh, and then yeah. list it. And I so get that. If you want my buying criteria or if, if anyone else yep. wants my great buying criteria, I, I'm looking for properties that are median price point, like 150 to 250. Obviously some markets are higher than that. Generally below median in whatever, whatever market it is, whatever that looks like. Um, but not too far below. Like we want entry level houses is kind of the bread and butter of what we're looking for. So you're looking for the ARV to be at that price, right? Yeah. ARV to be 150 to 250 okay. generally. I, I do still consider deals up above that, but I like, I wouldn't, I would be very hesitant. Like it would have to be an amazing to deal for me to do something that has ARV over 400. Yeah, like like for instance, to break that 250, like you can go in Royal Oak, you'll still get an entry level house yeah. for 300. You know. Yep. So. Exactly. 100. percent Yeah. So it's a it's all relative to the market, so you got to do your research. But yeah, generally right around median, whatever entry level buyers are buying in a given market. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I'm also looking for smaller houses because the advantage of smaller houses square footage wise is that as, as the square footage grows of projects you're doing, your budget grows mm -hmm. exponentially. Gotcha. So if you can stay like under 1200 square feet or so, that's like, mm -hmm. That's kind of prime time, at least for me. Um, yep. I'm not sure if others, uh, if other house flippers are are monitoring square footage like that, but generally entry level, it tends to fall in that square footage, anyways. Yeah, um, and yeah then, I would say I would I would say a max is 1800, but I would say yes yeah. is entry level. And so. it, and as far as like the size of the job, I'm generally not interested in projects where the repairs are going to be over like 60. Okay. Now, awesome. I, 
I say that because I have three currently going where the rehab budgets are well over 60. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I've done a couple of $100,000 plus rehabs. Gotcha. Um, and I'll just say this ain't the market to be doing those. Right. Nah. You, if you're, if you're going to flip, and I've, I've discouraged many people that I've spoken to from flipping right now because this this isn't the market where you get into it and you think, well, I'm going to get like a traditional mortgage. I'm going to live in this house for the next two years and renovate it over that time and then sell it. Right. Just my opinion. I think people that are doing that are probably going to get crushed in the coming market.